It's a well-known fact that the Flood are an insanely potent alien race slash parasite that pose a big threat. In fact, I got the idea for this video when I was watching another video by Wow Such Gaming, answering the question of why we wouldn't be able to survive such an infection. If you'd like to watch that first, I'll post the link down in the description. He does a very good job of explaining the particulars of just how threatening exactly the Flood are. Thankfully though, for us in this hypothetical situation, humans have a special talent for destruction as well as creation. A very, very strong talent. But let's get down to business, shall we? Now on the surface, it very well seems like the Flood are pretty much unstoppable, barring sci-fi magic rings. They're incredibly infectious, somewhat resilient, and able to scavenge for and use weapons, vehicles, and assorted tech. Plus, at later levels of infection, they will naturally develop a collective consciousness that will coordinate further flood actions from then on. It seems unbeatable, except for one small, itty-bitty little issue. Now what, allow me to deviate for a moment on this subject to give you a short but fascinating lesson on frostbite. Yeah, I think you know where I'm going with this. Anyway though, when fleshy tissue begins to cool too much, a wonderful condition called, you guessed it, frostbite will begin to set in. As it happens, blood flow decreases due to the blood vessels narrowing. Numbness will quickly begin to take hold as tissues receive less and less oxygen to function, followed by a steady draining of functional ability in the muscles affected. This will inevitably lead to a loss of movement ability. Once the tissue reaches a temperature below negative 4 degrees Celsius, ice crystals will begin to develop on the tissue, causing massive and almost assured permanent damage and death at the cellular level that will only worsen the longer the tissue is subjected to such temperatures. Returning to the flood, let's look at how they infect living beings. There's two ways, either with an infection form, which by the way, requires the form to jump onto a host and burrow into them to reach their spine, or spores, which take longer to work, but only need to be breathed in to work. We first need to find a way to halt the second form of infection, infection via spore. This is vitally important, and then we focus on the first form. In terms of containment, it really depends on how far along the flood are. If it's localized enough, a small nuke in just the right spot will put a dead stop to it right there. But if it succeeds in spreading further than that, more drastic measures must be taken. This is where the ice comes in. The goal is to change the weather on any infected continents to below freezing. Now the quickest way to do this is to lay down a layer of massive nukes upon the infested area to kick up as much dirt and debris high enough into the atmosphere to cause a nuclear winter. We will continue this nuclear pummeling to make sure, if we have to, that the entire planet descends into another ice age. This is the trickiest part by far. It's been shown that with the conventional, smaller nukes we currently use, a nuclear winter is very highly unlikely. But I'm sure if we work together to build the biggest, most irresponsible bombs possible, we can hide the sun underneath an unpierceable covering of clouds, which will subsequently cool the surface of the earth down well below freezing. Once this is accomplished, the second form of infection will no longer be viable for the flood, and even further, unless the infected forms find some kind of cold protection, they will inevitably freeze in the unbearable temperatures and suffer complete organ failure as the ice crystals form deep in any living tissue, massively inhibiting any sort of growth or movement or even thought. The flood will be greatly impacted, but not eliminated. After that, cleanup is relatively simple. Burn any kind of living organism seen, plant or otherwise, with napalm. Depending on how much area is infected, this could be a slow, drawn-out process. But the flood is an utterly nasty parasite, probably the worst, actually. And such horrible creatures require insane amounts of destruction to make sure that they will not ever be coming back. We cannot take any chances. Nuclear bunker busters may also need to be employed to make sure that the flood cannot use any civilian fallout shelters as cover. Besides that, we use a combination of thermal scanners with air-to-ground bombs and cruise missiles to find infected spots and destroy them. There must be nothing and no one left standing in the quarantine area for the flood to use. The aftermath of all this, once we finish, is quite frankly not pretty. But, relatively speaking, it's a small price to pay in exchange for complete eradication of the flood from the face of the Earth's surface using only modern-day tech. If more advanced technology was available though, we could instead use weather controlling devices, along with cryo weapons for a much more surgical containment solution. But that's about all I can think of for now. Alright, that's it. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't leave a like or subscribe or whatever. Simply sign up at intosanctuary.com, link in the description, and post on our forums. We'd love to see you there. But whichever you choose, until next time, keep it frosty.